Cerebral palsy is an umbrella term for a group of disorders that affects a person's ability to move. This means that not everyone with cerebral palsy looks the same. There is a meaningful future for every child, adolescent and adult living with cerebral palsy. For every person there is a positive way forward through treatment and support provided in partnership with individuals and their families. Cerebral palsy is caused by an injury to the brain that usually happens during pregnancy but sometimes it may happen shortly after birth. Cerebral palsy affects people in different ways because different parts of the brain can be injured. However, it always has some impact on the person's movements and this is because the messages coming from the brain to the muscles are affected. Cerebral palsy is the most common physical disability in childhood with one in 500 children born in Australia each year. Cerebral palsy affects people in different ways and this is largely due to the location of the injury in the brain. Therefore, cerebral palsy is described in a number of ways, including the parts of the body affected and the way in which it affects movement. Where the whole body is affected, that is both arms and legs and the trunk, this is called quadriplegia. Where both legs are mainly affected, this is called diplegia. People with diplegia often also have difficulties with fine movements of their hands. When one side of the body is affected, for example the left arm and the left leg, this is called hemiplegia. The next way of describing cerebral palsy is to talk about the way it affects movement and the type of movement difficulties experienced by people with cerebral palsy. Spasticity is probably the most commonly known term. Spasticity is present in about 86% of people with cerebral palsy. It results in muscles that become stiff and tight, which can make it difficult for someone with spasticity to use their muscles easily. It is difficult for someone with spasticity to turn their muscles on and off when they want to. This makes it difficult for them to move their arm or leg to do a task, or to use their mouth and face muscles to eat and talk. Some people have a little bit of spasticity, other people have a lot. The impact of spasticity on movement will therefore vary enormously between individuals. You might also have heard the terms dystonia or athetosis. Dystonia and athetosis describe movements seen in dyskinetic forms of cerebral palsy. Dyskinetic or dyskinesia refers to movements that are involuntary. These involuntary movements can become more noticeable when a person tries to move or when they become excited, agitated or tired. Dystonia results in unusual twisting postures, repetitive movements or sometimes both. Dystonia can present in one part of the body, such as an arm or foot, or throughout the whole body. With athetosis, we see slow, continuous, involuntary writhing movements that are present at rest and made worse by attempts to move. Around 6% of people with cerebral palsy have dyskinesia, with dystonia more common than athetosis. One of the less common forms of cerebral palsy is ataxia. Ataxia means without order or in coordination. Ataxic movements are characterised by clumsiness, imprecision or instability. Movements are not smooth and may appear disorganised or jerky. The incoordination seen with ataxia occurs when a person attempts to perform voluntary movements such as walking or picking up objects. Ataxia causes an interruption of muscle control in the arms and legs, resulting in a lack of balance and coordination. Sometimes people have a mixed type of cerebral palsy. For example, some people have both spasticity and dystonia.